Well, as you can see from the souvenir t-shirts, yes. we are just back from the state of Idaho. Yay! Yay. I love Idaho. I miss Idaho it Idaho is a beautiful place. No, Holy I crap. There. I spent a summer up there once. Yeah. Victor. I, li I lived up there. Pocatello. Victor, Idaho, which is where the laid back garage is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Victor, Idaho. But at any rate, we digress. What took us to Idaho this time were the shakedown runs of Union Pacific uh, locomotive number uh -huh. 844. Yeah, well, that was Ooh, fun. One of the most interesting and historic uh -huh. locomotives in America. Right. The only major steam locomotive, and maybe the only steam locomotive of any kind, that has never been retired. Right. From the time it was built during World War II, it mm -hmm. has been in full active service ever right. since. And this was a a kind of normal, if not extremely extensive shopping over the last couple of years. They completely rebuilt the engine, oh nuts, bolts, and gaskets, <laughs> and uh, had to take it out for uh, shakedown tests to make sure that it's safe and working correctly right. and that all is well with it. That's right. So they ran it up to northern Idaho from their shops in Cheyenne, and we were there. Yeah, absolutely. Chasing it around and drooling all over oh, it and okay. talking to the crew. and. Oh, okay. So on and so Bye. forth. Bon. <laughs> so check this out. The shakedown runs of locomotive 844. Well, we met the locomotive in Pocatello, Idaho. Oh, You're all stomping grounds. My old grounds. stomping grounds. I was surprised I could remember how to get out there. Yeah, you used to live there. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, The train had just come down from Boise on a run, and we got there just as it was arriving. Good timing. Exactly. A lot of people showed up to look at the locomotive, and that was fun. Yes. But boy, doesn't it look oh good. Oh, my gosh. I mean, check out the steam. It was cold and rainy, but the steam, oh, man, it makes it really look cool. And the diffused light, it, uh, just, it yes. was just beautiful. Yes. It was just, it was really, in some ways, the high point of the whole trip. Yeah, perfect railroad weather. Just seeing it here in this wet, steamy, <laughs> cold, and it was just really enjoyable. Exactly. The Union Pacific operates several different steam locomotives. They call this the Heritage Fleet, and it's based out of Cheyenne, Wyoming. This particular locomotive, 3985, a Challenger class locomotive, was put back into service in 1981 and made part of the Heritage Fleet. It joined 844, which at that time was known as 8444, and the two locomotives could be seen, sometimes together, operating around the west. The locomotive uh, was a bit challenging, maybe that's why they called it a challenger, to keep operating. But they found that it had some erosions in the firebox, and so it was removed from service in 2010. It is the intention of the Union Pacific to get this locomotive up and operating again, but there are a few projects ahead of that, including the rebuild of 844, which is now complete. There are also five diesel locomotives in the Heritage Fleet. These three units are E9 diesel locomotives built in 1955. They were added to the Heritage Fleet in 1984 after being completely rebuilt. The other two diesels in the Heritage Fleet are an SW10 Switcher and a DD40X, the most powerful diesel locomotive ever built. 
And in May of 2014, this locomotive, one of Union Pacific's big boy locomotives, was taken to Cheyenne to join the Heritage Fleet. They've been working on the rebuild ever since. Now that 844 is complete, this locomotive will get their undivided attention. When a steam locomotive parks for the night, well, actually that's when the real work begins. There's a lot of service that goes into keeping a steam locomotive operating. So even though this locomotive is effectively brand new, there's still a tremendous amount to be done every single day. One of the problems that they've been running into is excessive corrosion of the fireboxes and the assumption has been that this is being caused by the water that they're running, which is now culinary water. So they're constantly analyzing the water that they put into these locomotives, and in fact they're filtering and treating the water before putting it into the locomotives. The water that they're using these days is full of chlorine and fluoride and other additives that are put into our drinking water. Back in the early days, these locomotives were filled from water tanks and the water tanks were filled by pumps that were pumping up groundwater or captured water from a stream or river, something like that. Nowadays, these locomotives are filled from a fire hydrant or from tanked in water that was probably derived from a fire hydrant. And so it's city culinary water and there's just no telling what might be in there that could prove corrosive to the locomotive. Part of this complete rebuild was to totally reconstruct a firebox as the original firebox had become quite thin from the corrosive action of boiling water. So this is the solution. The water is being piped into this railway express agency car, an old railroad post office, and there's a pipe connecting the railway post office to the water car. And inside the railway post office is a complete water treatment plant and water softener. It will probably take decades to evaluate just how successful this program is. But what is known is that all three locomotives needed new fireboxes because of the corrosive action of the boiling water. This link will direct you to a video on building the firebox for this locomotive. I've never seen this engine before. I had to get a picture of it. What a cool rebuild. It's so pretty. I, I haven't seen it for years because it's been under construction for a few years. They actually finished it last year, but they're still testing and still doing shakedown runs before they take it out this year for real. Mm. You know, it used to be that the cab was sort of leaning one way and the tender was ah, leaning another. Really? This, this poor thing has been in need of work for a while. Oh my. How impressive it is now. It looks new. It does. It looks like it just rolled off of the factory. We decided to stay over at Lava oh, Hot Springs. Oh, I love Lava Hot Springs. I mean, nothing wrong with Pocatello. No. But, you know, there's these great old resorts mm -hmm. at Lava Hot Springs. Yes, so. a place I used to frequent a lot and go swimming. Yeah, and it's right there by Pocatello. Mm -hmm. right. So we decided to spend the night there in this old, old hotel. It was built in 1911, right on the river. And it's got these hot springs where mm -hmm. people could go and take the waters. Oh, and it's therapeutic. <laughs> and you can still take the waters. They've got these <laughs> funky old, old, old hot tubs yeah. down in the basement. And you can still go down there and mm -hmm. soak in the mineral water. <laughs> I'll wait till summer and hit the swimming pool. But what a neat old hotel. <laughs> This was just so much funner, uh, made a nice addition it to did. chase in the steam train. I love these old hotels. It's great, and it doesn't have anything to do with steam trains, but you know, when you're out chasing trains, it's about the whole experience, not just the trains. Oh, absolutely. This is fun. It is a lot of fun. It is fun, fun, fun. I am having a blast. I'm also tired. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, we met the train the next morning in McCammon. Oh, it was I love it. on its way down to Ogden. <laughs> Thank you.
We ran into a bunch of our friends here, uh, Greg and Adam. Adam and, and his kids. And and <laughs> a whole bunch of the Salt Lake crowd were right. up to chase the train. And yes. so we chased it as far south as we could. It's hard to keep up with a train, though, that can go 80 miles an <laughs> Look hour. Look at that, yes. I mean, the roads are just these little narrow two lanes. Right. Here we are at 80. Keep in mind that back when this engine was in service, it would go 110. 110, So wow. this is just creeping along for it, as hard <laughs> as that is to believe. spectacular place on the line I think is here in Bear River Canyon. No kidding, look at that. The train has to gain elevation to get around Cutler Dam and it's perched up on the side of the cliff. Wow. It's just amazing to see. Once they're clear of the canyon, they can really open it up and head right straight for Ogden. Once we got to Ogden, we were actually right in an active switching area, trains switching cars right around us. You need to be careful around trains. Boy, I'll tell you what, we saw little kids playing here and not all that well supervised. It scared the crap out of me. Right, they had the Operation Lifesaver, which is to teach children safety around railroad tracks. Yeah, and when you're chasing steam trains, you really have to pay attention. It Absolutely. is a rail yard after all. Right, people working. Check out these beautiful passenger cars. The, the Union Pacific maintains something around 100 passenger cars to use with the Heritage locomotives. The passenger cars live in Omaha, but uh, something around 100 of them. Well, my favorite is the domed observation car. I love that, the dome cars. and A lot of these cars are sleepers, oddly enough, but <laughs> for some reason, that's just what they've ended up with, is right. a lot a of lot sleepers. Of and I think a lot of them are being converted into chair cars. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with historic equipment, you, you make do with what you get. Exactly. They actually only had two passenger cars cut in here. The others are all just service cars oh. for taking care of the locomotives. Mm, that makes it's, sense. It's just a shakedown run, so they put on two passenger cars. I'm not even sure why they had passenger cars. They didn't need them for a shakedown run, but I guess for the VIPs. and. I swear I saw Shane Norris on there. Yeah? He well, waved. Yeah, well then must you must have. <laughs> You know, different people do get a chance to ride the train that work for the railroad. Right. And so I guess that's what the passenger cars just uh, give the employees some chance to ride the thing during the shakedown run. But the really good seats were in the locomotive. Yeah, I agree. That's where I'd prefer to ride. But, uh, mm -hmm. Hot, that. wet, gooey, steamy, smoky, yeah. and still my favorite place to ride. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, when they got to Ogden, they just put the locomotive on public display. Oh, for, they left yeah. it there for a day so yes. people could come and look at the engine. Take and pictures. Take and, pictures. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, thousands of people kidding, came by lot. just to see the thing as it was parked there. Mm -hmm. Gives the train crew, too, a chance to sort of talk about their work that they do with the railroad and mm -hmm. talk up their project and right. even explain how the locomotives work to people. Right. One of the really fun things is that people come by and they bring their kids. Isn't that fun? You know, I mean, kids have never seen this sort of thing. They've maybe seen Thomas the Tank Engine. Right. Or they don't know what railroading used to be like. And this gives them a chance to really experience this stuff firsthand. And see a real train. Or see a real live on this mm -hmm. goodness train, not right. just Thomas. And right. And realize what railroading was like a few years right. ago. See how big they are. It's kind of fun because this is also the Utah State Railroad Museum. Yes. So there's a lot of trains on display here. Mm -hmm. Just fun to see that. And one of the locomotives is this one, 833, oh. which is almost identical is. to 844. Same type of engine. A little bit older mm -hmm. than 844. A They've got another one of these things in the shops up at Cheyenne that they use just for parts for 844. Seriously? Seriously. Wow. And we're heading up there in two weeks oh, to good. scope that out. Get so that'll be that. fun. <laughs> well, this was certainly a lot of fun. Just I'll say it was. 844 around. What a beautiful engine. Oh, no kidding. And we're heading to Cheyenne here in two weeks. We yes, talked to we the are. train crew and... They're going to let us come up and <laughs> see all the locomotives in the roundhouse. How fun is that? That's fun. That was amazing. Wow. I'm, I stand all amazed. In spite of the rain and everything, it was still... Oh, it was worth it. It was worth it. And it makes yeah. the steam, you know, so much better. It does. In the moment when you're drenched and cold, it's a little right. less fun. But then you look at the video and you go, oh, oh wow, I that's see neat because it's yeah. steam. Of course. And it just looks so good. And that locomotive looks so... Amazing, oh, was, after the rebuild, oh, yeah, those new. guys at Cheyenne done good. Yes, they did. Yeah, they have, they're perfect. And they're getting so good now at rebuilding locomotives as uh, they work on the big boy. Uh, some of the uh, experiences that they've had rebuilding 844 are now uh, going to be applied to the big boy. Right. Because there were things about the big boy that were leaving them sort of scratching their head. Uh -huh. And now they kind of are, you know, they have the equipment, they have the skills, they have the chops, right. and they can fearlessly dive into the big boy, ready to put a new firebox in it and rebuild the boiler and do everything that needs exactly. to be done on that massive, massive locomotive. Right. And boy, am I looking forward oh, to that. I'm kidding. I, for, I am for many reasons. <sighs> but just so cool and so nice to see 844 back on the, back tracks, on the tracks and looking brand new. Mm -hmm. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, you want to pop on over to the channel. And while you're over on the channel, there are almost 200 movies. Wow, that's almost. A lot. We're going to have a little party for 200. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very, very select people. Only everyone is, is allowed Every, to attend because yeah. it's here on the channel. Yeah, ages two months to 99. Yeah. It, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And while you're on your way over to the channel, you want to subscribe. Absolutely. And that's done by clicking on the blue button. Zoink! Blue button, just coming in now, makes you a subscriber, makes you cool, doesn't supply the Ray-Bans, you have to bring your own Ray-Bans. Ah. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will be here again next week, this time with a model car contest. Absolutely. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>